So good morning. 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 Welcome to Unity on the Mountain. For uh, people who have not been here in a while, we're so glad to have you. But in Richard, just tell us that you should. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. stand up and open up the service. And we are going to go ahead and see heaven is here right now. Heaven is here. We're going to be up on the wall. And I'll guide you through. It's uh, Claudia Carolyn and Aaron Brock. Says the living God, 
we inspire spiritual transformation, creating a world of love, peace, and prosperity. We are an inclusive spiritual community, inspiring, awakening, and serving in love. dedicate this blessing to the special children we have with us in our lives and in the world. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We accept you just the way you are. Walk in beauty. You are our divine.
we know that in our hearts. And we, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you, dear God. This is such a precious process. And may all those that have put these prayer requests know that all is well. And now Dean will read the daily words. The daily words of faith. I have faith in the power of God working in my life. The more time I spend with God in prayer and meditation, the stronger our relationship develops. This strengthening provides a base upon which I build my life, just as a house is built upon a firm foundation. Even if the winds of fear blow and storms roll in, I have faith that my house is safe because the rock beneath me is unfaltering. However, during difficult times, I may struggle to trust that God is working toward good in my life or in the world. If I feel defeated because of a challenging situation, I turn my attention to spirit. I focus on the calming rhythm of my breath and my body relaxes. I do not seek a solution. I simply rest in the presence of spirit. My faith supports me. I feel my trust in God and I have peace of mind. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. 1 Samuel 2.2 2. Thank you. Let us prepare ourselves to say our very sacred Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Are you ready there? <laughs> Reverend Vicki Goldston, Pastor Emeritus of Living Spirit Church in Florence. Let's welcome you. As most of you all know, this is my second home. Love, you know, some places I haven't seen before, but, you know, I've been hanging around this place for long. <laughs> um, I always kind of catch up with some of the stuff that's been going on and I'll tell you that um, you know I've been publishing a magazine and uh, it's called Martin Spices and it embraces the gift of diversity Reverend Rwanda Gale she writes for it and dear Reverend Carol Landry Grace Gifford I've had a few people from this area write for it and then also I've been supporting my daughter you guys met her I guess last year Camille and she is doing project say something which is an advocate for social justice and fighting against racism and so forth and so on so we have been busy in Florence and I know that some of you guys have been busy here as well because there's all this interfaith stuff going on and all kinds of, of councils that you all are on for well-being. But I've got a question. How in the world do you keep your light activated in the throes of all this, uh, I'll say through this process? I won't say anything negative about it. I'll just say through this process. How do you keep going on? And I have found along with a lot of my friends who've been doing this stuff for quite some time, that we have had to employ a lot of the old school stuff 
it never goes away. I mean, it's just that we don't, you know, we don't think of it anymore, like making sure that we are grateful, mm -hmm. making sure that we forgive folks. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's just all the stuff, the truth stuff that we know about, you know. But I said, you know, I, I'm finding that I got to kind of increase my toolbox just a bit in order to get through some of this work that we have been doing. And if I, I mean, you can't turn on the news and not say that you got to find some kind of way to keep that light activated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sonia Mathis, you all know Sonia Mathis? Well, Wanda Gill knows her because she's spoken at Unity in Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's a spiritual leader there. And she also writes for Garden Spices. And so she wrote an article about the code. And she feels that there's a code for everything that we do. And she used this definition. She says, code is a system of rules to convert information, such as a letter, word, sound, image, or gesture, into another form of representation, sometimes shortened or secret, for communication through a channel or storage in a medium. So I, you know, I, mean, I liked her article. And I especially liked when she translated things kind of like into spiritual jargon and just realized that, of course, that our mind, our mind becomes the place, our environment, which holds the variables of thought. So the variables that we employ enable us to either stay in the light or go to a place that doesn't do us any good. So we look at the business of any time that we think of lack. Lack not meaning just about money now. We're talking about lack in terms of things just aren't going right. We, you know, politically things are going down the tubes. We ain't got no money. I don't have, you know, the whole world is, is, is disappearing as we know it. Every time we think of lack, we are giving in to the fear process. That becomes the variable. Every time we are looking to our abundance, then of course, love becomes the word. Now, why is this so important? You know, we always say the only two emotions. Old school, y'all, the only two emotions are fear and love. Well, I'll tell you what. Years ago, I read about the teachings of the Kabbalah. And while, you know, all of it was very interesting reading, you know, there's always a couple of things that really stick out and, you know, really teach you. And the thing that taught me the most was within the Kabbalah, their core teaching, is that every time we react to anything, we are living in fear. Every time we react to anything, we're living in fear. In order to be in love, we must be proactive. We must be proactive. And I thought that is absolutely the truth. Every time I react to anything, I'm, I'm you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be out of ego. It's not going to be out of spirit. And it won't do me any good. And I was trying to think of a story that might illustrate that. And I went biblically, bi biblical on y'all, you know. And uh, I mean, really, really, really old school, like Matthew, you know, the loaves and fishes story. I, mean, I know y'all know that story, right? But it was just so perfect, so I had to go there. But <laughs> anyway, um, that story, if we just look at how it reads, first of all, the Christ is there and having taught the multitude of people. The disciples, who just don't ever seem to get it. They don't never seem to get it. You know, they look to him and they say, this place is a desert. And we really need to send people away so they can feed themselves. So we know right away when we talk about something being a desert, that we're saying that the mind 
is empty, that environment is open and receptive to whatever you, you're going to give it. So then the Christ says, no, why don't you feed them? I love that. Because it's like, it's not just about me. Y'all can do the same thing. You all have the potential of, you know, that Christ spirit. You can do whatever, you do, whatever I do. So he says, no, he says, we, let's feed them. And the disciple says, well, we don't have anything but five fish and two loaves of bread. So he said, you know, because Christ was so cool. If he wasn't nothing else, he was cool. He's <laughs> you know? like, okay, give me, give me what you have. And the first thing he did was he held it up to the heavens. Well, you know, we say the heaven is the divine mind. He held it to the heavens. And of course, the rest is history. There was so much. There was so much an overabundance for everybody. The fish representing divine idea. The loaves representing abundance. There's enough for everybody. How does it come? So then we realize this, you know, we got, you know, we know about this business about cold. So we already know that we, we, you know, we're tapping into divine mind. We know about the idea of, of, uh, uh, of, uh, Reacting and being proactive, we know that. So now let's put into our tool chest prayer and meditation, which we already know. <coughs> and why is that so important? I mean, every time you see me up here, I'm going to say something about it. Because it's the most important thing we can do as individuals to stay and center in the place that we need to be in to hold the consciousness of life. So it's so important because unless we do it, we can't hear nothing. We only hear us. We don't hear when spirit is talking to us. We don't hear when somebody else has to, to, to suggest something to us that might, might do us some good. I'll tell you, you know, with this business of Project Say Something, it's my job to post on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> you know what Facebook is like. And, you, and with all the stuff that's been going on recently, here I go. You know, I, 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 make, I do this post. And I use a very discouraging word about one of the candidates running. And it, was, it wasn't nice. And this guy, I mean, he ain't got nothing to do with living spirit or with unity. I mean, he's a very spiritual person, a person who's a friend of mine on Facebook. Out of the, 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 the clear blue sky, he comes and he messages me. And he says, Vic, is that of love or was that of ego? He called me out. <laughs> now let me tell you something. Why could I hear him? Why could I hear him? <coughs> because that morning I was, you know, I was, you know, I was in it. I was, I was meditating. So that I, 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 I know how to listen now. I know how to listen now. So when I listened to him, what did I do? Now, I just felt like it was right to post that because such and such and such. No. <laughs> I said, you're right. You're right. I'm deleting that. And I did it. I deleted it. Because, I mean, he was right. He was right. But that's the kind of thing, you know, and that's just a little thing. But every single day, in fact, every single moment, we may be confronted with whether or not to go to fear or to love. And this clarity, this sense of clarity by speaking affirmatively as we do in prayer, by listening as we do in meditation will make all the difference. So we got that in our toolbox. Next. <laughs> all right. Okay, then we got anger, resentment, and all those emotions that take us to a place that we don't want to go to. It's just that they don't serve us in any kind of way. Now let me ask you this. Do you think that we should express those emotions? I'm just asking. Should we? Or should we hold them in? Should we just kind of let them fester for a while? I mean, what are we supposed to do with them? If you've ever read David Hawkins, do y'all know who David Hawkins is at all? Why do y'all know him? Okay, well, anyway, he is the king of the map of consciousness where he, you know, he's always calibrating 
frequencies. And of course, uh, the, the, the spirit of enlightenment will be at the highest frequency, the, the other thousand, and anger and resentment and all those guys are way down at the bottom. But the idea is that no matter what we do, I don't care how much we zen out, those things are a part of our existence. So, how in the world do we, do we employ this idea of being active or proactive if they are a part of us? If we're going to be confronted by them in our daily living? First off, it's just important to know that if they're going to be there, then we can see them for what they are. All right, I'm mad. I'm angry. All right, anger, here you are. Let me look at you. Let me see what it's about. Let me see why I am angry. Let me see what I can do about this. Because the idea being, whatever that anger is, I don't want it to go out there. I want it to stay where I can contain it and learn from it and see what it is that I need to do to transform it into the proaction that I need to take. Okay? So one of the things that we talk about at Living Spirit is employing what the Native Americans used to do. Uh, and they still do it, and it's still a part of, of their spiritual practice. It ain't nothing but breathing. That's all it is. But we understand the importance of seven, the number of completion. Everybody stand up if you can. <coughs> Place your hand on your lower dentin, your energy center, and just do what we call seven holy breaths. So it is. That practice, if you cannot make it to seven, just do one. It's just a conscious breath, which allows us to say, all right, I'm centered in peace. I come to that place where I know it's the truth of me, and I'm going to be okay through this process. I can be okay. So that is just a, a little practice that we can do. Another thing that we do at Living Spirit is that affirmation stuff is so important just to affirm all the time that I am a light worker. I'm a light worker. I'm a light worker. And as such, I can do the work that I have to do to stay in peace. Now, this is the other thing that's important. Um, this is the age of Aquarius. <coughs> We've been singing about it in the 60s. And, you know, those of us who know, we know, you know, peace and love and all that, you know. But we didn't, we didn't filter in the idea that Communication is rampant. It is. I mean, you, 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 you burp, and the whole world knows about it the next day. You know, so that's just how it is. We are shifting. We are shifting. Now, another thing that I thought about was, you know, for so long, I did not watch the news at all. And I didn't watch it because there's too much negativity, too much stuff going on. And I wanted to center in peace. And I felt yeah. like the only way I could do that was to stay away from anything that was, was outside of what I was doing. Now I have determined that as long as I am centered within meditation and can hear, now I can listen to the spirit within me 
that tells me what to do. So I want to say this to you guys. Some of you are active. I always want to refer to one of y'all, Tim, because I know her. You know, now I just know it's like she's always into stuff, you know. Get on too, they're always into stuff. They're like my spiritual sisters. But anyway, <coughs> I don't know how many of you are or aren't, but I want to say to you, if you're not actively doing something, posting or marching or whatever it is that you might do, it's okay. It's okay. Listen to your spirit. Let it guide you. Let it guide you so that you will know exactly what it is that you need to do. <coughs> so that's another thing that I want to say. Put it on the chest, old school. And the last thing that I want to say to you guys is the, 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 the really, the oldest school thing that I have. <coughs> and that is the teachings of the man that started this movement, Charles Finmore. There is no power in evil. Absolutely none. There is no power in fear. No matter how dark things may see, it may completely surround us in shadow. There may be all kinds of things that we cannot understand that are unfathomable to us. But know that you know that you know another teaching from the Kabbalah, the certainty principle. Know that you know that the light never fades. It never goes out. It's always shining. <coughs> so I want to thank you guys for allowing me to shine my light for a minute here <laughs> at Unity. And we are continuing to be a blessing. Would you, are, are you do, do, should I do meditation or just a, oh, or that would you like? Because there's a meditation that I, you know what, who got the magazine from, um, the, the real popular magazine on spirituality that was out in all the, um, everywhere, all the bookstores and everything, and Time, Time, the Time magazine. Y'all didn't buy it? Oh are you kidding? <laughs> I'm running, we're running about that magazine. Time life, they got everything about crystal chakras out there. The whole nine yards, I mean, we may know about that stuff, but it's really nice to see it in that kind of a magazine. But anyway, within that magazine, there was such a beautiful image, and I just want to share it with you guys. So, if you would just close your eyes for a moment. And lift your hands as though you are cupping something. And your hands represent universal presence. Within your hands, visualize a globe. Begin to see its illumination as it transforms into a sphere of light. We understand that this light represents the truth of each and every one of us. We know that no matter what happens within this universe, divine presence <coughs> has us. Divine presence guides us. With this knowing, with this certainty, we open our hands and we free this light into the universe. And we say, Amen. And so it is.
sing a song for him to stand up. It's one we've not done before, but it's very easy, glowy, repetitive. I walk out in here with the first screen. When it comes up, then we're going to do it twice. Okay, and then go. Got it? So we'll do this process and do it. If you want to join me, you can join me. Of course, it's very easy, but we're going to do this spring twice. And then we're just changing the eye on strong. I can feel that I'm left side closed. Okay.
supplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Lovingly I give, and lovingly I receive. Wherever I am. 